Located in the middle of Europe, Slovakia has a long and varied history. It contains Europe's youngest capital city and also its highest mountain range, as well as cultural masterpieces and unspoiled nature. Bratislava, located in the heart of Europe and the capital of Slovakia, a city with a colorful history. Surrounded by the city hall and several palaces, it's like being taken back in time into a rich and glorious past. At the beginning of the 14th century, this then fortress town had around 6,000 inhabitants. Today, the Baroque ceremonial rooms in the old town hall are open to the public and there is also a museum. It was the region's first city and has a typical town hall. Directly behind the old city hall is the primatial palace that was built in 1781. Classicism in its purest form. The Jesuit church was built in 1638 as a Protestant church. The extensive Franciscan palace adjoins the main square and leads to a monastery and church of the Franciscans. The city's oldest well-preserved sacred building. The narrow Mikalska leads gently uphill and ends at a tower gate that opens to the Lover's Bridge. A long pedestrian boulevard leads to the Slovakian National Theatre, which was built in neo-Renaissance style in 1886. A visit to the old Nicola Cemetery is like a journey back to the time of the Danube monarchy. Returning to the city, we visit the residential palace, which was built as a garden palace for Anton Grasselkovich. Behind the palace, there's a large garden. The Gothic St. Martin's Cathedral is a huge old fortress church that was once adjacent to the city walls. Between the 16th and 18th centuries, 11 Hungarian kings and 8 royal wives were crowned in the city's Catholic cathedral. The cathedral is regarded as the city's greatest religious building. Leading from the cathedral is Kapitulska Street and in a small side alley is the monastery of Clarice's church. The mendicant orders were forbidden to construct a church tower along the church's main axis. In the northern section of the old town that once lay directly in front of the city wall, the Trinitarian order built one of the most beautiful Baroque churches in the city. The vast number of ornate altars and sacred sculptures make this house of God into a veritable religious museum. Next, and overlooking the castle, the Capuchin Order built a church consecrated to St. Stephen of Hungary. The 
The route to the fortress travels uphill until the Gothic Sigismund Gate leads into its grounds. The huge fortress is the largest historic building in the city and is situated 85 meters above the Danube. From here there's a panoramic view, a fact that the Celts, Romans, Slavs and Hungarians used to their advantage. An historic monument. On the Danube Slovakian side and to the east is the town of Komanjo. In the old urban market square, a miniature Europe with 45 buildings has in recent years come into existence. Buildings in various striking architectural styles showcase numerous countries. Towers, domes, arcades, half-timbered buildings and wood carvings frame the square at whose centre is the Millennium Fountain. It is a unique mixture of architecture that signifies the common culture of European countries. Nearby, General Klapka, erstwhile commander of the fortress, continues to guard the town hall. There are typical water mills at various tributaries of the Danube, as in Kolorovo. They were joined to the riverbank and a large water-powered mill wheel kept the millstones moving at a steady pace. Until they finally became traffic barriers. Further to the northwest, the route leads to Trnava. Under the protection of a sturdy wall, the monastery and church of St. Jacobus were created in the 14th century with the support of the House of Anjou. The new city centre contains a theatre, city tower and the pillar of the Holy Trinity. Next, the brilliant white and towering church of the Holy Trinity squeezes itself between the monastery and residences of the bourgeoisie. The monumental Cathedral of St. John the Baptist was affiliated to the university and founded in 1634. With a fine main altar, early Baroque splendor and colorful gilded stucco on both ceiling and walls. Kapitelska Ari was one of the city's main trading routes. The city wall in the east of the city is also in splendid condition. Just beyond the wall is a well-known landmark, St. Nicholas Basilica, which, with the square, forms the historical city centre. Gothic frescoes in the entrance hall, Baroque altars and colossal wall paintings on both sides of its 60-metre-long main nave depict scenes of Christian history. Trnava is a true gem. We begin to explore Middle Slovakia in the village of Brilovce. Since the 13th century, the local people have used the region's soft volcanic tough rock in a unique way.
They built sheltered cave dwellings with favorable climatic conditions that are still used as storerooms. In the north is situated Banska Stjevnika, city of silver. The old town and mines of the surrounding area have been designated as a World Cultural Heritage Site. There's also the Church of the Assumption of Mary that was built by the Dominican Order at the beginning of the 13th century. The center of the street settlement was formed by the town hall, the evangelical church and various townhouses. This is the late Gothic Catholic St. Katharina Church with a single aisle and small towers. Uphill, beyond the church and in the middle of the road is the statue of St. Trinity. At first sight, the old castle looks like a fortress because sturdy walls surround it with a main gate that protects the inner building. In fact, everything was built around a basilica and a charnel house. The old castle became a museum. Today's landmark is the new castle that has protected the city since 1571. Here there are household items, clothing, weaponry and suits of armor. Silver brought prosperity and created historical splendor. A mining museum was inaugurated on a nearby mountain ridge in 1965 and it provides a fascinating insight into the mining of ore. Since 745 AD, mining has taken place here. When it reached its heyday in the 14th century, banks commanded the bulk of its production. Florence's Medici family headed the venture and also the Thurzo Fugger Company in 1546. It was funded by the national budget. Gradually, however, the mineral deposits became exhausted and additional production sites opened up around the world with lower prices. So mining here ceased. Further north in middle Slovakia is the mining town of Kremenice, which is a listed historic monument. This, the most beautiful of the Erzgebirge mining towns, was built in the 8th century as a mining colony and subsequently grew and grew. King Robert of Anjou designated it as a free royal city in 1328 and skillful coin masters from the Czech city of Kutnohora emigrated here. An enclosed staircase leads up to the city castle where the Catherine Church dominates the site. From the church tower, the guards had a perfect view over both town and countryside, a necessary advantage. In times of imminent danger, they could barricade themselves here with the city's reserve of gold and coins. In the 15th century, 
8,100 kilograms of gold and 9,000 kilograms of silver were mined here and coins minted. This continued for almost 700 years. The coins for Cuba, the Congo, Moldova, Namibia, Samoa, Guatemala and Somalia are from Graniche. Not far away in the west and well camouflaged in the midst of forests is a magnificent building, Bosnice Castle. The most well-preserved castle in Europe with original furnishings that represent various cultural periods. The castle experienced many changes of ownership. Finally, in 1643, the aristocratic Palfi family followed the Thurzos who had died out. The property reverted to the Habsburgs, who expressed their thanks to the Palfis for their assistance against the Turks and the insurgent Magyaris. The original Gothic castle became a Renaissance castle and later a Baroque gem. From the entrance hall of the middle castle, a spiral staircase within the tower leads to various living rooms. Under the rule of Count Franz Polfi, the interior was again altered. A passion for collecting and a love of art were innate to the Count and he soon possessed six residences. In the crypt below the chapel, Count Johann lies at rest. A romantic fairy tale castle. Still further west near the Czech border is Trenčín. An ancient settlement at the foot of a royal watch castle with patrician buildings and a Jewish synagogue with Byzantine Moorish influences. A steep pathway leads up to the castle. There's a clear view of the city's landmark, its origin, dating back to Roman times. Midway is the parish church of Mary Berth that is protected by the fortress wall and built next to the charnel house. In the 14th century, Almost all of today's Slovakia was ruled from this castle by the dreaded Matius Čak. It later played an important role in the Turkish wars. There are suits of armor. And the final section that leads through a superb inner courtyard indicates the impressive protection offered by the castle. The view from above is overwhelming and the castle's defense is so strong that it had proved to be impregnable. In 1790, both castle and city burnt down. Seven hundred meters above sea level, herds of sheep graze peacefully on the slopes of the Great Fatra. 
This is the location of the almost hidden and forgotten Vlakolinec, a unique village in the heart of Slovakia's Liptov region. The area soon became inhabited. Today, this vibrant village is tantamount to being an open-air museum. Most of the buildings are cosy, three-room houses in which farming families once lived. In front of the houses are small flower and vegetable gardens, well cared for by the farmers' wives. A small wooden building is a fountain, once the village's only source of drinking water, 12 meters deep and with a stone interior. Constructed in 1770, a two-story bell tower is situated in the center of the village. Keeping with the village, the cemetery is well looked after, tranquil, modest, and emotionally touching. For years hidden by the hilly landscape. Still further north, we reach Terchova, birthplace of Slovakia's national hero, Shuraj Janosik. The legendary robber chief has an exhibition dedicated to him, in which the living conditions and customs of that time are on display. His proud monument overlooks the romantic Kratna Valley. The Robin Hood of Slovakia's forests was the savior of the suppressed and broken. He hid in the great forests of Tatra and Fatra and became a symbolic and courageous figure of social justice. On the northern border to Poland is the open-air museum of Vichilica. Various objects from the region's villages were relocated here and thereby saved from decay. In 1974, this was Slovakia's first open-air museum with original domestic furnishings. It exemplifies the age-old traditions of a Kishet's village. It contains the furniture and folk architecture of many historic buildings from villages that were submerged by the artificial Novia Bristici Lake. It provides an impressive insight into the living conditions of past times at home and at work. In front of the entrance to the museum is a railway that uses the railroad network of an old forest railway. Where today tourists make their way through the forest, in the past timber was transported. At the beginning of the 20th century, this narrow gauge railway was built and stretched for 110 kilometers. Mm -hmm. 
Up to 250 meters of height were overcome in a zigzag and curves of almost 180 degrees. What today is used for sightseeing once lightened the demanding work of the area's lumberjacks. In 1969, the entire railroad was shut down and dismantled due to its financial decline. However, a small section remained as a cultural monument. Rebelina's Liptov village was inaugurated in 1991. It contains buildings from eight villages that were also submerged by the artificial lake. This is the house of a minor nobleman from Paritsovic. Also, hunting salons were fashionable at that time, with various trophies as proof of hunting success. The entire early Gothic church of the St. Virgin Mary was relocated from Liptovska Mara. Craftsmen showed great skill. Down to the smallest detail, they dismantled a church and rebuilt it here. The arrangement of the buildings has been designed to emulate the former settlement structure of larger villages. The result is this unique monument of wooden folklore architecture situated in the middle of nature. The Liptov Museum village contains much interesting information on life in feudal times. A journey into bygone days. Today, Spiska Sobota is a district of Pobrad, the old village of the Germans in the Zips region. The well-preserved merchants and craftsmen's houses frame the market square like an architectural ensemble. And next door, St. George's Church, flanked by a Renaissance bell tower. The city was for a long time the richest in Upper Zips. Five magnificent Gothic altars adorn the interior of the church, with at least two that originate from the workshop of Master Paul. They are the region's most famous wood carving masterpieces. In the shrine of the main altar, the church's eponym, a brave young boy, sits astride his steed and defeats a dragon. St. George, gilded and larger than life. Sacred splendor at the finale of Europe's Middle Ages. The High Tatra is the smallest high mountain range in Europe, a magnificent mountain landscape with rocky mountains and many lakes. In 1947, 
The national park of the same name was founded, an imposing natural paradise in the heart of Slovakia. This mountain scenery emerged in primeval times when the foothills on the southern and eastern edge of the Tatra mountain mass was immersed in a deep graben. Crystal clear water flows in torrents, seeking its way through the rocky landscape. In the lower areas, secluded forests offer fine walks and the observation of wildlife. In addition to red deer, packs of wild boar wander through the unspoiled scenery. Ideal for bird life. These mountains developed thousands of years ago, and following the melting of their dense icy crust, many large and small lakes remained. It's also a paradise for wildlife that is suited to a mountain habitat. The station of Srebski Pleso marks the beginning of a journey with the electric Tatra train that connects a number of resorts to the Tatra mountain range. While traveling in the comfortable and tram-like car, the route continues steadily uphill and the view gradually becomes clearer. Today, cable cars run in several sections to the highest peak of the Tatra mountain range. After several changes, the mountain station of the Lomnitz peak emerges from within the clouds. The surrounding area is breathtakingly beautiful. The ridges and peaks of the Tatra line up picturesquely. Located deep down, several small mountain lakes appear from among the rocks. This is an imposing natural paradise. Kismarok is located in the northeast, in front of the fabulous scenery of the High Tatra. The town's 15th century Gothic castle is located at the edge of the old town and its external walls form some sections of the city wall. The town went through troubled times and both town and castle faced repeated hostilities. In the center of the old town is the Roman Catholic Holy Cross Basilica, both Gothic and Renaissance design dominate its rich interior. With wall paintings, altars and late Gothic vaults, and a freestanding bell tower. The town hall is also a monument of the town. Following a devastating fire, it was reconstructed according to Renaissance design. Next to it is the Redoubt, also once used as a sentry post. Spectacular in brick red, the new Evangelical Church AB with the mausoleum of Imre Tokoli, who helped introduce religious freedom. Next to it is one of the most beautiful articular churches in Slovakia. Outside, plain and modest, but within, a national cultural monument. 
During the Carter Reformation, it was built within a year, completely made of wood and without a stone foundation. Further to the east is Levoccia. As early as 1317, the city became a free royal town. The town hall is one of Slovakia's oldest architectural seats of a city magistrate. Within the historical assembly hall is the Saxon mirror, in which new council members took their oaths. And a museum of Zipsan culture features sacred figures and altars which are regarded as precious wood carving works of art. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the city was one of Europe's most important centers of trade due to the trading routes that crossed here between Hungary and Poland. The Gothic residence of Master Paul of Lovoccia is now a museum. On the altar of the last Jacobus church is a sculptured replica of the Last Supper, a vivid depiction. Next to the city hall, Jakob Cathedral is regarded as a national treasure. The main altar of Master Paul of Lovoccia is, at its height of 19 meters, the world's largest Gothic wing altar. an extraordinary masterpiece of wood carving created from linden wood. To the east is Spischkihrad, one of the largest fortifications in Central Europe. At its zenith, up to 2,000 people lived here, government, military and servants. Over the centuries, the castle was repeatedly extended. Accordingly, it took on various building styles. It began with a circular stone tower, which was followed by a palace and Romanesque mansion with two floors and additional extensions. The castle contains a fine array of suits of armor and weaponry, all of which create a medieval atmosphere. Also instruments of torture that were used in the penal system. The view from the top of the tower reveals the true dimensions of the fortress, as well as its exceptional strategic location. In 1780, it was only after a devastating fire that the castle's decay began. In the extreme north on the Polish border is the Sylvania Klaster Monastery that is situated in the middle of Slovakia's paradise. Its foundation by the Carthusians dates back to the year 1319. They were strict ascetic living friars who were followed by the Camaldolises in the 16th century.
They diligently engaged themselves in science and education, and the monk Cyprian dedicated himself to medicinal botany. Between 1765 and 1771, he laid out a herbarium with the plants of the surrounding mountains. Later, a museum was established in the monastery. The Gothic St. Anton Church continues to radiate its beauty. A raft ride on the Dunacek River is a popular tourist attraction. It begins close to the monastery. Both rugged and romantic is the natural scenery where the river makes its way through spectacular terrain. The raftsmen routinely control their fragile rafts through occasional raging waters. Here, for several kilometers, the river forms the Polish border. In the 18th century, rafts were the practical means of transport for timber and other goods. And some raftsmen were even traveled as far as to the Baltic Sea. Soon the journey is over as the rafts make for the landing place in a bend of the river. As in ancient times, the exciting raft ride is unforgettable adventure. Bardejov, the free royal city, is located in the northeastern corner of Slovakia. Its medieval center was designated as a world cultural heritage site in the year 2000 and the town hall square impresses with its dimensions and picturesque character. Magnificent buildings frame the square, which has few entrances. The old town hall in the middle of the square dates back to 1505. In 1907, the historic town hall became a museum, featuring numerous historical exhibits of the town, as well as its arts and crafts. On the site of the basilica was once a Cistercian monastery. Following a devastating fire in 1878, the church was given its present appearance. The extraordinary interior of the church has been designated as a national cultural monument. The basilica characterizes the image of both the market square and the town itself. Slightly below is located the evangelical AB church. This Franciscan church was built by Augustine monks and then used by Protestants. Bardiov now shines out as a much-loved treasure of bygone times. The wooden churches of eastern Slovakia are secret treasures. It's most likely that the oldest wooden church is situated in Hervatov, around seven kilometers southwest of Bardiov. In the Carpathian region, this unique architecture has been preserved in the style of the People's Baroque. In the middle of the 17th century, the works of carpenter Jonas were restored 
as were the paintings that complemented them. In Kriva, there's a Greek Catholic building that is dedicated to St. Lucas the Evangelist. Its interior contains a remarkable and well-preserved icon complex that dates back to the 16th century. The iconostasi is the barrier that, in all Eastern churches, separates the common people from the sanctum, which is reserved only for priests. Deep faith is the symbol of Byzantine rites. The church buildings are located in a natural setting. Built in Jedlinka in 1763 is the Greek Catholic Church of the Protection of Our Lady. Its interior is dominated by a fully preserved Rococo iconostasis, the most well-preserved monument of its kind. The exterior of this Greek Catholic wooden church, dedicated to Archangel Michael in 1742 by Lara Morova, makes it easy to understand the principle of three divisions. Here too is a magnificent iconostasis that dates back to the 18th century. The arrangement of the icons follows established traditions. In the secluded landscape of eastern Slovakia, the Catholics of the Byzantine faith determined who could build their churches outside their villages. popular masterpieces of deep faith. Close to the Polish border, the small parish of Mirolia also contains a cultural treasure. Timber was readily available and was used for its construction and internal furnishings without a single nail. As is tradition, Iconostasi is based upon precise iconographic principles. This pictorial wall represents the symbolic border between the worlds of both the human and the divine. The Holy of Holies, a freestanding altar. The wooden church of Nitznie Kamanik is situated on a hill above the village in the middle of a cemetery. It represents an ideal type of three-section Balkian church construction. Although the iconostasi is built in the traditional way, it appears to be different due to the use of white and gold, which is not found in simple folk art. Throughout the centuries, the wooden churches of eastern Slovakia testified to the people's unshakable trust in God. In the south of eastern Slovakia is the former royal city of Kozice. In the 14th century, it was granted many privileges and became a city of goldsmiths and bell founders, and also an important trading city. The Gothic Cathedral of St. Elizabeth determined the architectural ensemble of the old town. The main altar depicts St. Elizabeth, the Virgin Mary, and a life of suffering. The freestanding urban tower is adjacent to the cathedral, a 14th century clock tower. In the middle of a large market square, water fountains dance to the beat. And nearby, a freestanding carillon 
with 22 bells plays out on each and every full hour. Beyond is the classical and historic 16th century town hall. Today it's no longer in use. The East Slovakian Museum. Here the golden treasure of Kozice can be admired in full. European and unique. Kozice typifies this country. A land of fortresses, castles and cities that date from the Middle Ages. And despite its many mountain regions, a southern influenced way of life. Slovakia, a land between mountains that urges to be discovered. <laughs> 